Daisuke Kanbe briefly narrates his early life and states that he believed his childhood was happy. However, there was a day where everything changed for him and life became much more boring. Elsewhere, Detective Haru, burdened by a stack of books, encountering a group in black suits, ushered into an urgent meeting. However, his colleague Ryo assures him it's nothing serious, reinforcing his impression of a mundane day. Upon entering his office, he's greeted by his colleagues. Once he arrives at his desk, Haru asks his co-worker, Shinosuke Kamei, if he had heard anything going on that would require Division 1's support, but Shinosuke replies that he is not. Haru receives a call from the security department saying they are short on manpower for the car festival in Ginza. Haru talks with Yukihiro Kiyomizu, the department's chief, and he is instructed to be the one to provide backup with Shinosuke, whom Haru convinces to come along. Elsewhere, Daisuke boards a flight to Japan and will arrive shortly. Meanwhile, Haru persuades his friend Shinosuke to join him, by saying Miss Matoya will come also, which he complies immediately. Haru and Shinosuke leave their office to help out at the festival. On the way there, Shinosuke comments on the former's previous position as a member of Division 1, which results in Haru aggressively stopping the car. At a traffic light they see a fancy car, and bitterly comment on it, passing by Daisuke who was driving the extravagant car. The pair arrive at the festival, and notice the large crowd. Shinosuke points out that the crowd is likely due to the arrival of Aruba Emirates Prince. Meanwhile, Yoko and Hiroshi, two bumbling thieves, scout jewelry stores for a potential heist, with ideal target. Arriving at the show, Haru and Shinosuke ask for the case, but then denies their authority as they are, don't belong to the first division, which means it has nothing to do with them. Haru with his thick-skulled personality, suddenly grabs the radio, and discover the first division is searching for a bomber targeting a visiting foreign prince. Yoko and Hiroshi on the other hand, looking out for a shop with a young, easily overpowered guard. Unfortunately, every guard they encounter is either surprisingly strong or highly experienced. On the verge of giving up, they spot a seemingly unguarded store and attempt their robbery. On the other hand, Haru was angered at the fact the event wasn't being cancelled, even though they had learned of the crime beforehand, Aru questions Ryo and his partner. They reveal that they had tried to cancel it, but their suggestion was denied, as the prince's presence was of too much importance. Aru tries to argue this fact, but Ryo turns him down and clarifies that the police have to work well with the government. Elsewhere, at the police superintendent's office, Daisuke talks with the general. He requests to be placed in the detective division, even after the superintendent tells him he could arrange for him to be in the first or second investigation division. They both take a smoking break, and the superintendent picks up a call. He is happy to hear the bomber suspect has been detained, and asks about the location of the bomb. The store Yoko and Hiroshi Rop turns out to be a sweet shop, much to their dismay. Ryo receives another call, and Haru and Shinosuke listen. They are notified that the bomb is still located in a white van across the street. A logo was present used by a cleaning company, Fukunishi Cleaning, which they used as a basis. They begin to look for it. Coincidentally, it was the vehicle used by the robbers for their escape. The thieves flee after their robbery unknowingly, using the bomber's van as their getaway car. During the chase, a reckless man named Daisuke wreaks havoc on public facilities and vehicles. Haru intervenes. But it's Daisuke who introduces himself as a detective from the Metropolitan Police Department's detective division. Fearing they can't outrun the police, Hiroshi suggests surrendering. Daisuke, with the help of his AI assistant Husk, promptly pays double the repair costs, and even throws a billion yen at the prince who mocked his appearance, buying his car in the process. The wealthy detective, alongside Haru and his newly acquired car, pursues the thieves. Daisuke expertly blocks roads and routes, minimizing traffic congestion, as there wasn't time for evacuation. He pushed the white van to the edge of the bridge, intending to drop it into the river, to absorb the impact of the bomb explosion. Hiroshi was very scared then got out of the car, leaving his girlfriend Yoko, who could only cry in frustration because the bomb would explode. Haru rushed over to the white van to help Yoko. In the end, the white van fell into the river, and the bomb explosion was suppressed so as not to cause panic. Haru unfortunately loses his footing and falls in himself. Daisuke finds amusement in this outcome. Annoyed by having to mentor Daisuke, Haru complains to his boss, Inspector Yuko. A visibly upset Haru Kato tells his boss, Yukihiro Kiyomazu, that he cannot be a suitable mentor for Daisuke Kambe. Yukihiro listens to his concerns and tells him not to worry about it then, as Daisuke should be able to take care of himself anyways as an adult. On cue, 
Daisuke enters the office, and Yukihiro guides him to his seat. As Mahoro Saiki offers the newcomer some candy, Shinosuke Kame yells over something on his computer, and, exasperated at the noise, Haru tells him to be quiet. Shinosuke exclaims that the model Akiko Hoshida had passed away from a drug overdose, which greatly shocks Haru as he shouts and forces his way past Shinosuke to glance at the screen. Shinosuke dejectedly comments on how Akiko was Haru's favorite model, but Haru ignores him and asks why they were receiving news through the media and not through the case. Shinosuke informs him that their department doesn't receive this type of information. Mahoro sadly watches them as Daisuke chews the candy. Haru then tells his chief that he would be making his way over to the stop shoplifting campaign, and wistfully exits the room into the hallway. His thoughts are interrupted, however, by Daisuke following him. Annoyed, Haru asks him why he was accompanying him, and that he would be alright by himself, but Daisuke insists on coming along. The pair arrive at Shinjuku, and walk past its station, where they see two entertainers perform. Haru stops to watch them and notes how desperate they are. Daisuke immediately drops a 10k yen bill into their donation hat, and they excitedly claim it and leave to drink. Haru tells Daisuke off and tries to inform him that the performers weren't acting for money. Rather, they were doing it to improve their own skills, and by giving them money, they lose their motivation to work. Daisuke ignores him and sniffs pointing out the presence of mescaline much to the performer's dismay. Under interrogation by Daisuke and Chosuke, it's revealed they obtained the drug from a model named Isizaki. Haru and Daisuke, along with Haru's reporter friend Akira Mita, launch an investigation into Isizaku. They observe him and a black-haired girl exchanging drugs for money, deciding to gather more evidence before making an arrest. They tail him for several days. Jessica is absent from Stego. Haru reveals his findings to Akira, connecting Isazaki's drug operation to the criminal syndicate Gandawara. The black-haired girl works as a messenger. Later, while parking his car, Haru spots the girl and decides to follow her. However, he gets lost in the forest. After spotting a faint light, he arrives at a mansion where he sees Daisuke exiting. As Haru explains his discoveries, the black-haired girl appears and introduces herself as Suzue Kanbe. It dawns on Haru that the mansion belongs to Daisuke, and Suzue is related to him. Suzu reveals she's been undercover for Daisuke, and that the Gandawara group is led by a man named Umezu, who will soon be attending a drug party with other key figures in his operation. Daisuke proposes using his wealth to secure an arrest, but Haru expresses disgust and departs to handle things ethically. Akira, Haru's reporter friend, provides chilling details about the party. He infiltrates the event, exploiting Omezu's distraction to steal his phone, as evidence against his drug trafficking. As Haru tries to escape a security guard, an individual dressed in a mascot costume apprehends him and whacks the guard with a wine bottle, and flees to the roof with the phone. Harvey, along with a furious mob, chases after him, but Haru reaches the roof in time and locks it. Suddenly, the person revealed to be Akira, who undertook this risky act for money, apologizes to Haru. Suzu arrives in a helicopter, and Akira explains there's only one gas mask. Daisuke then purchases the building, and unleashes poison gas onto the roof, incapacitating Haru and everyone else who managed to get there. The criminals are apprehended, thanks to the evidence retrieved from the cell phone. Haru, enraged by Daisuke's methods, confronts him. Daisuke deflects the blame, reminding Haru of his expulsion from the First Division for injuring a civilian due to a misfired weapon. He reveals Haru hasn't been able to fire a gun since. Fuming, Haru storms off. Yukihiro requests Haru's presence at a meeting in Hong Kong, offering Daisuke's private jet for the trip. At Kikuko Kambe's residence, Harukado sits next to Daisuke and Suzue. Kambe, as Kikuko introduces herself as Daisuke's grandmother, Haru exchanges greetings with her, and Kikuko thanks him for taking care of her grandson. Suzue presents Kikuko with a gift from Hong Kong, and they all prepare to eat it as Kikuko questions Daisuke's happenings at work, and Haru's experiences working alongside him. When Haru mentions his partner's reckless financial usage, Daisuke is visibly irritated, and receives a scolding from Kikuko. After learning that Haru is older than Daisuke, Kikuko requests him to be a good senior to him and educate him well, much to Daisuke's annoyance, and a smug Haru agrees to do so. Jiro Hattori passes by and Kikuko introduces him as the family's butler. Haru asks if he is the butler Daisuke uses to gather intel and make purchases, but Suzue explains Daisuke's butler is a separate entity, an AI named Husk 
While Daisuke drives back, Haru mentions that he had a business trip planned, and taunts Daisuke by reminding him to make sure not to trouble their co-workers. His remark prompts Daisuke to immediately accelerate the car, startling Haru. While traveling by train to a business meeting, Haru sits next to a teenage boy named Yuichiro Saito. Haru was offering a food to him but denied the offer. He then insists it, and they started to have a conversation. Yuichiro Saito seems frustrated because he failed the college entrance exam he wanted. Haru tried to comfort him and encourage him. He befriends a young boy named Yuichiro Saito, who's on his way to a preparatory school and plans to travel to the United States with his younger sister. At Shinagawa, Haru bids farewell to Yuichiro and gifts him a charm. As he enters the station, Haru hears over the intercom that the train platform will be temporarily closed. Realizing something was wrong, Haru approaches an attendant and requests for information, clarifying that he is part of the police. The attendant reveals a standoff is happening in one of the train cars, and Haru immediately begins rushing towards it. Outside the train, Haru gathers more information from another attendant and goes inside the train, where he comes across many hostages and a hooded and masked individual holding a woman at gunpoint, who tells Haru not to come close. The woman begs Haru to help her, and Haru, recognizing Yuichiro's voice, informs him that he was the one who sat next to him. Yuichiro recognizes Haru but pretends he doesn't, instead angrily instructing him to leave the train. The young man sitting next to him was holding hostage several metal-aged women, who were about to attend a concert by their idol singer group. Not long after Hoshino and his partners in the first division arrived and told Haru to withdraw. When he refuses to withdraw, Haru recalls the events that caused him to resign from the first division. At that time, Haru was senior in the first division, gets a mission to handle robbery and hostage taking at a bank. He managed to bring down the robber but then a woman bank employee picked up the gun belonging to the robber and pointed it at him, because it turned out she was a gang of robbers. Then he was forced to shoot her. However, after the incident, he felt very guilty and resigned from the first division. Back to the present, Haru meets Daisuke at the station, and they use Hiyusuke to gather details about the high-profile case involving Yuchiro, who's suspected of murder. Haru protests against Daisuke's methods, and the two utilize Daisuke's special equipment and smoke missiles, to create a diversion and board the train. Ryo opposes allowing Yuchiro to negotiate since he's live-streaming the incident. However, Haru deduces that it's a financial ploy to fund Yukihiro's trip to the US with his sister. At the same time, the middle-aged women who were the hostages were already getting restless because the concert would start in 30 minutes and they would be late if they didn't leave soon. They then became angry and tried to attack the young man. The fans, determined to watch their idol, keep approaching him causing the gun to fall from his grasp in the chaos. However, Kenby had already anticipated this, and brought an idol singer group to the station to entertain their hostage fame. Ryo recognizes the gun, the gun is fake, but drops his own weapon when a hostage bumps into him. Yuchiro picks up the fallen gun, a real one this time. Haru aims his gun at Yuchiro, but his past trauma prevents him from acting. Shortly afterward, Kanbi approached the young man, promised he would take care of his younger sibling's medical expenses, and asked him to turn himself in. The situation became safe and under control again, and no one was injured in the hostage incident. With the case resolved, Haru exits the train and greets Katsuhiro. His former superior praises him for his work and departs. In the train, Ryo thanks Daisuke for his help, and Hust notifies Daisuke that all media related to the incident has been deleted. Back in the car, Haru questions Daisuke how he knew Yuichiro wouldn't shoot him, and the man replies with Haru's quote about how he wasn't the type of person who would kill. Daisuke then quickly accelerates the car once again, much to Haru's dismay. Daisuke decides to leave home to avoid eating natto for breakfast, ignoring Suzue pleas to return. He receives a call from Haru, requesting his help at a park. Upon arrival, Daisuke finds an exhausted Haru, who introduces him to a young boy named Siyoji. Tsuyuji has lost his puppy, Shiro, and pleads for their help in finding it. Haru suggests using Husk to locate Yoshi's missing puppy, but Daisuke realizes he left both his earring and phone back at the mansion with no any money. Feeling hopeless, Yoshi starts to cry. Daisuke initially refuses to help, but eventually gives in. Later, Haru admits to Daisuke that he had been fake crying just to convince Daisuke, but Haru grins and says he fell for it too. Daisuke suggests Shiro might have returned home, but Shuji runs off with the detectives hot on his heels. Meanwhile, at the Kambei mansion, 
Suzue informs Kikuko of her worries about Daisuke. Kikuko assures her he'll return when he's hungry. Suji, Haru, and Daisuke all search for Shiro, but have no luck. Daisuke decides to give up and drop Shuji back home, but the boy is lost and doesn't know the way back. Haru takes him to a nearby police station so his mother can pick him up. Just as they're leaving, Syoji tearfully reminds Haru of his promise to find Shiro. Daisuke informs Haru he doesn't have any money and doesn't want to go home at the moment. Haru lend him a money for his fare but then a text suddenly changes in a nearby signage saying, waiting for your return, coming from Suzue, inciting him to go home. This made Daisuke hesitate. They stop by a convenience store for groceries. While waiting in line, Haru asks Daisuke if he got into a fight with his wife, Suzue. Daisuke informs him that Suzue is a relative, and Haru seems overjoyed. Haru and Daisuke arrive at Haru's apartment and begin cooking. Daisuke cuts himself while chopping potatoes. Haru finishes cooking, while Daisuke takes a shower. The two eat dinner and drink soju. After Daisuke is disgusted by the expensive ahem Haru purchased, the latter cooks tuna bean sprouts, which Daisuke enjoys much to Haru's delight. The pair watch a cup movie while drunk, which Haru finds inspiring while Daisuke nods off. Suzue stays up the whole night to watch security footage from outside of Haru's apartment. Suzue can't sleep because of her worries of what might happen to Daisuke. Haru wakes up hungover and notices that Daisuke must have left only to find him sleeping in the bathtub moments later. Daisuke leaves, and Haru spends the day searching for Shiro with Tsuyoshi. That evening Daisuke appears with Shiro. Tsuyoshi is overjoyed to see his dog again. While Daisuke informs Haru that the dog isn't actually Shiro, but a sibling of Shiro from the same breeder. Haru angrily tells Daisuke that money can't buy everything. Daisuke explains that the real Shiro was hit by a car, and hands a somewhat placated Haru the bill for the dog. Daisuke returns home with a few ingredients. Suzue was overjoyed at his arrival, and paused for a bet, seeing the cut on Daisuke, and randomly asked if they are hungry. He then starts to prepare the Kato family's devil's natto rice for Suzue, to the astonishment of Kikuko and Hattori. President Alvarez of Poliador arrived in Japan to secure loans and sign contracts related for the construction of a giant dam. As a result, he is now target of critics, and unfortunately, terrorists who are opposed to the said construction, because towns will be moved elsewhere. The proposed area is considered a heritage site because of relics or artifacts found in the proposed construction site. The task force is assigned to protect him due to terrorist threats. They're supposed to work with the first division investigators, including Chosuke Nakamoto, an older detective nearing retirement who seems eager to participate. The team awaits Daisuke's arrival, but he attends the embassy as Alvarez's guest. There's tight security, and one of the guards retrieves a package accidentally delivered to the kitchen containing weapons. Alvarez desires the Kanbei family's help in modernizing Koliador, but faces opposition from protests. However, Daisuke informs him he won't succeed as the head of his family. An infiltrator who retrieved the package kills the embassy chef to conceal his identity. Haru and the rest of the task force befriend an elderly janitor working outside. One of the investigators warns Daisuke and Alvarez about a threat, and they're sent to a safe room after discovering the chef's body. Daisuke uses Haosi to hack security cameras and monitor the situation. Haru, determined to help, decides to check if the cameras have been tampered with. Suddenly they see a man fleeing the building, and Haru chases after the murderer. Husk retrieves security footage, and Daisuke discovers a clip showing the murderer planning to use a tear gas canister designed by a Kambe Group company filled with VX gas. Inside the safe room with Daisuke and Alvarez, communication from inside the safe room is blocked, but Suzue notices abnormalities and rushes to help. Haru apprehends the murderer, but he throws away the only key to the safe room down the drain and admits his fabricated triat of Alvarez's death was meant to halt the construction of a dam and save his homeland. Before Haru can stop him, he commits suicide by jumping from the building. They scramble to find a way to deactivate the tear gas canister, but it's rigged. Daisuke's AI informs him he lacks the authorization to explain how to disarm it, even though it's a military product. Thankfully, Haru saves them just in time. He realized the janitor had a hidden spare key around his neck. Alvarez returns to his home country, and Nakamoto begins investigating the canister's origin. Daisuke becomes extremely suspicious about his lack of access to information within his own company, 
and delves deeper into the situation. He asks Suzue how she knew about his predicament, and she explains it was due to radio signal jamming that obscured his location. Suzue asks if there's anything she could help but was rejected. Moving on, Haru and his subordinates was on their way to a hall where trial will occur. It was about their performance during the mission. The trial doesn't go their way and was criticized because of the commotion during the mission, and even led to the death of the important suspect. All of his subordinate put blame all to him, stating that all they did was follow Haru's order. Because of this, Haru is removed from the case as he allowed the suspect to die. Even though his actions saved the president's life, Nakamoto learns about the canister and discovers a company called Mizuo Futures Technologies might be the manufacturer. He tells Haru his suspicions about a cover-up by higher authorities, who are trying to hide evidence like the jamming device. He also reveals he investigated Mizuo Futures Technologies before. They confront Imura, a Mizu executive, about the jamming device, but she refuses to answer and forces them to leave by recording their interrogation. Daisuke hacks Imura's electric car using Hia Ski, causing her to speed. He stages a fake accident and accuses her of reckless driving to arrest her. Haru believes it's a coincidence and wants to question her as well, but the superintendent general specifically ordered them to leave it to Daisuke. Daisuke interrogates Imura about the canister and Shigamura Kambe, but she does not give a single satisfactory response during her interrogation. Kyusuke successfully hacks her laptop, and Daisuke is shocked again to discover he lacks access to specific folders containing details about the Kambe group. Takagi and Hashino, Haru's former colleagues from Division 1, approach him. They suspect Daisuke is using his connections and resources to falsely accuse and interrogate Imura. Haru believes Imura is involved in smuggling illegal substances and wants to bring her to justice. Chosuke has uncovered incriminating evidence against Imura's son, Akatoshi, that she previously hid. Haru tries to dissuade Makimono, but he's threatened with job termination. Chosuke is also threatened with losing his pension by his boss, Yukihira. Regardless, Chosuke uses the evidence to pressure Imura into revealing the link between Mizu and the Kanbe group. Haru, however, disapproves of blackmail and has Imura released immediately. Imura attempts to flee, but her car is hacked again, causing the battery to explode and killing her instantly. Chosuke immediately blames Daisuke for her murder. Haru learns that Chosuke's last investigation involving Mizu was the murder of Jessica's mother, Sayuri Kanbe. The scene then switches to the past, showing Nakamoto, who was still a detective in Division 1, along with Katsuhiro Taki, who currently serves as head of Division 1. Chosuke and Katsuhiro investigated the potential murder of Sayuri Kanbe, none other than Daisuke Kanbe's mother. The murder was disguised as a robbery, however, Nakamoto, a reliable detective, concluded that the murder may have been carried out by Sayuri's husband, Shigamaru Kanbe, Daisuke's father. They received no help from the Kanbe family. Sayuri's mother-in-law, Kakuko, was uncooperative when Nakamoto and Take interrogated her, as if she was hiding something to protect her son. Shigamura was unavailable as he was overseas. They even hired a sketch artist to identify him but were unsuccessful. Using a stolen photo, they secured a witness who identified Shigamura as the culprit. The police director, Saiki, whose deceased father-in-law personally oversaw Katsuhiro's investigation, kept a close eye on the case. Chosuke and Katsuhiro diligently pursued Shigamura, questioning people in the area. One day, Chosuke discovered a locker key in a photo album market with the symbol for Adolium, a dangerous material. He and Katsuhiro suspected this might be what the murderer was after. However, Yukihiro discouraged them from investigating further into the investigation, claiming he had direct orders from Saiki to monitor them. Undeterred, Katsuhiro continued searching for the locker, while Chosuke investigated further, the clue suddenly disappeared. Somewhere at the same time, he received a notification that Shigamaru Kanbe was found to have ended his life and left a will stating that he was the one who killed Sayuri. He also discovered the key had been stolen from Shigamura's desk. With Shigamura dead and the key missing, the investigation closed. Chosuke and Yukigiro decided to resign from the first division, while Katsuhiro remained. Chosuke reopens the case, and both he and Haru suspect Daisuke of murdering Imura. They believe he's trying to cover up evidence, similar to what his family did in the past. Back to the present, Kato finally finds out about Nakamoto's past, and also a little about the Kanbei family from his superior. Because of that, he and Nakamoto rush to Kanbei's house to conduct further investigations. Haru confronts Daisuke, 
who admits to attacking Imura's car. This infuriates Haru so much that he wrecks his car through the gates of the Kanbai mansion. He blames Daisuke for being insensitive to others' feelings and relying on money to solve problems. Daisuke maintains his innocence and insists he only wants to uncover the truth about his mother's murder. Katsuhiro's suspicions of Daisuke grow more substantial, but he's suddenly gassed in his car and loses consciousness after experiencing vivid hallucinations of Imura accusing him of her murder. He admits to fearing for his life and clarifies that he wouldn't sabotage his own investigation. The toxins trick him into calling director Psyche, and he awakens at the Kambe residence, realizing the hallucination-inducing drug was created by an advanced virtual reality headset, designed to manipulate him into confessing his fear of director Psyche and the Sayuri investigation, leading him to destroy evidence in his own case. Daisuke recalls a memory of witnessing a man standing over his mother's dead body. Chosuke admits he initially assumed Daisuke was solely protecting his family, and orchestrated the terrorist attack on the president. Both Daisuke and Chosuke shared a motive to learn the truth about Sayuri's death. Daisuke explains to Chosuke that he was misunderstood. Chosuke agrees to detain Katsuhiro at Daisuke's residence, while they gather more information about Adalium, and question him further. Hoping to extract more details, Chosuke goes for a drink with the detained Katsuhiro. Chosuke explains to Daisuke and Haru, that he was never able to locate Shigamura's research facility. It's also absent from the Kanbei group's records. He entrusts them with this task. Daisuke leaves Haru to sift through years of files, while he and Suzuka attempt to use Hyusk to find the lad's location. However, their access level is insufficient. Observing Katsuhiro's fear of Chosuke, he deduces that director Saiki might have been murdered to silence him and conceal something. Since then, Katsuhiro has also feared for his life. Chosuke suspects Katsuhiro possesses additional information about the mysterious locker. Frustrated after reviewing countless files without success, Haru suspects Husi is hindering their progress. Suzuka realizes Husi has been systematically deleting important data and information from their company servers. Daisuke attempts to question his grandmother, but she refuses to cooperate and advises him to move on. Suzuka informs Daisuke of her suspicions about Hyusuke, fearing it monitors their conversations beyond audio, potentially even lip-reading. Through careful analysis and decoding of a family photo, Haru finally discovers the location of the third lab. It's situated in one of Daisuke's family mansions in the mountain. Daisuke decides to infiltrate it alone. Suddenly, an intruder enters the mansion and tries to reach Katsuhiro, confirming their suspicions. However, the intruder bypasses all security measures using passwords belonging to Shigemura. Suzue attempts to assist, but Hiyo-C shuts down her supercomputer. Chosuke appears remarkably calm throughout the situation, while Katsuhiro panics. Meanwhile, Daisuke gains access to the lab and discovers security footage proving Shigemura is still alive. Suzue confronts the intruder in the dark, unable to use Husk. He reveals his face and immediately knocks her unconscious. Chosuke and Katsuhiro decide to confront the mysterious man together. Chosuke admits he didn't expect him to be alive, but since escape seems impossible, he chooses to fight alongside Katsuhiro. After regaining consciousness, Suzue learns about Chosuke and Katsuhiro's deaths. Daisuke resigns, claiming this is a family matter and he no longer wants to be involved as a detective. Yukihiro is enraged by the deaths of Chosuke and Katsuhiro, and desires revenge. He suggests collaborating with Daisuke, but Haru informs him of Daisuke's resignation. Yukihiro reveals that Chosuke possessed two dice, one a transmitter, and the other a receiver. He successfully planted the transmitter on Shigemura. Hashino and other First Division investigators arrive and arrest Haru, labeling him the prime witness in the murder case. The modern crimes team manages to evade the First Division officer tailing them. Suzuka claims she saw Shigemura, but all security camera footage has been erased. Vasquez's grandmother admits she knew her son was alive, but stayed silent to protect him. The rest of Haru's team focuses on pinpointing the transmitter signal. While Suzuka tracks down Shigemura's car, she finds it and relays the location to Daisuka, despite suspecting it might be a trap. Haru informs Hashino that Shigemura is alive, but Hashino scoffs at the idea of a deceased mastermind. He accuses Haru of murdering Katsuhiro, harboring resentment for the accident that rendered him unable to fire a gun. This event continues to traumatize Haru. Meanwhile, Daisuke reaches Shigemura's car, finds a letter in the back seat, and enters the vehicle. 
Hashino discovers Katsuhiro's resignation letter, prompting him to reconsider Haru's claims. Daisuke triggers a nerve gas trap in Shigemura's car, revealing someone intended to kidnap him. Suzuka manages to find footage of Franz Wenski, bodyguard to arms dealer Thomas Matheson. However, Hiyusuke starts deleting the footage as she watches. The modern crime is team locates the transmitter signal near Aura Wharf and inform Haru, who's on his way with Hashino. Daisuke sends a mass email offering a reward for pictures of the surroundings, using them to locate Shigemura at our wharf. Haru hides on top of a container to observe Shigemura. He follows him onto a ship, secretly boarded by Daisuke, in an advanced underwater combat suit. Daisuke encounters Wenski on the ship and overpowers him with ease. Shigemura activates an Adalium antenna that disrupts electronic signals, destroying Haru's phone and Daisuke's suit. Shigemura declares he anticipated this meeting. Wenski attacks Daisuke, destroying his earring and severing communication with Suzue. Badly injured, Daisuke is unable to fight back. Haru rushes to Daisuke's aid and draws his gun, but hesitates to pull the trigger again, haunted by his past trauma. Wenski nearly knocks Daisuke unconscious, but Daisuke recovers quickly and prepares to fight back. Haru uses a crane to drop a shipping container between Daisuke and Wenski, creating a temporary barrier for escape. They seek shelter in a deserted part of the ship, and Haru treats Daisuke's injuries. Daisuke criticizes Haru for not shooting Wenski when they had the chance. Wenski refuses to follow Shigemura's orders to pursue Daisuke, as his sole objective is to deliver the ship to Politanya. Shigemura promptly transfers 100 million yen to Wenski, claiming it's a lesson for his son. Suzue scans the ship, and notices the unusually small engine for its size. She sends drones to assist them, but they're shot down by the ship's crew. Daisuke and Haru head towards the lifeboat. Smaller drones deploy from the larger one, delivering Daisuke his earring so he can contact Suzue and neutralize Hughes. Suzue warns them about a planned ambush and explains that Adalio is powering the ship with zero emission. Daisuke follows Suzue's instructions and heads towards the engine room, while Haru confronts their enemies alone. He cleverly deceives Wenski into believing he fell overboard after being shot. Reaching the engine room, Suzue theorizes that Adalium is a substance that uses seawater to generate energy, potentially providing the world with limitless clean energy, or serving as a weapon of mass destruction. Daisuke starts dismantling the engine, but Wenski tackles him. Outmatched, Daisuke learns Wenski was paid by his father for a lesson. Haru arrives and aims his gun at Wenski, but hesitates again. Daisuke encourages Haru to fulfill his duty and uphold justice. Haru finally overcomes his hesitation and fires his gun accurately, destroying the engine. Consequently, Daisuke's suit reactivates and he overpowers Wenski. Daisuke attempts to arrest Shigemura for Chosuke and Katsuhiro's murders, but Shigemura retaliates by ordering Hiyushi to attack Daisuke with the ship's laser cannons. Shigemura escapes, but Daisuke and Haru apprehend Wenski and hand him over to Hashino. Hashino expresses relief at Haru's return to his former self. They destroy the entire ship and conceal the remaining Adalian, tracking Shigemura to his mountain lab. Daisuke reflects on his life-altering childhood trauma the day his mother was murdered. In the lab, they discover a first aid kit and begin exploring. Daisuke gathers more information about Adalium, while Haru stumbles upon an underground passage with a train leading back to the Kambe residence. Mitsi, devoid of vengeance towards his father, simply craved the truth. Daisuke successfully transfers the collected data to Suzuha before finally confronting Shigemura. Entering the room where his father supposedly resided, he skates on thin ice with his observation. The man was right-handed, unlike the presumed left-handed Shigemura. The imposter, commending his keen perception, unveils his true identity, Atori, their family butler. He further discloses he was commanded by Kiko to alter his appearance and impersonate Shikamari to deceive Daisuke. Meanwhile, Daisuke encounters Kakuko and attempts to apprehend her. However, she argues that a court verdict would take an eternity at least 10 years. Subsequently, she confesses to desiring profit from the Adalium find by consoling it from the world. It was, in fact, Daisuke's mother, Sayori, who yearned to make her research public knowledge. When Kikuko discovered Shigamuru's support for Sayori's cause, she orchestrated Hattori's illumination of Sayori. Upon reaching Sayuri's location, Shigamuru is stunned to find her murdered. The very scene that haunted Daisuke for years. Kikuko, it turns out, has also kept Shigamuru captive ever since he attempted to follow Sayori to her demise. 
Daisuke informs her she will never be absolved of her crimes. Haru pursues Hattori, the culprit responsible for Chaska and Katsukiro's deaths. Hattori retaliates and shoots Haru in the leg, although the injury pales in comparison Butler's critical state. Ultimately, Haru manages to apprehend Hattori, armed with the knowledge that he possessed explicit instructions not to harm Haru. Due to his severe injuries, Daisuke aspires to fulfill his parents' goals and nearly instructs Suzue to publicly release the Adalium data to all research institutions globally. However, he hesitates briefly when Kikuko reminds him of its potentially perilous nature. Haru, severely wounded and bleeding profusely, stumbles into the lab. Accidentally, his hand makes contact with the supercomputer's button, releasing the entire data set worldwide. This outcome entertains Daisuke, who promptly arrests Kakuko despite her demands for data retrieval. Two weeks later, Haru is offered a position within the first division once more. He declines, however, favoring the modern crimes team, which becomes significantly more effective with Daisuke's implementation of Husk to assist in their missions. Daisuke assists his father's recovery, while Adalium surges in popularity. It dramatically transforms the world, leading to numerous advancements. However, some individuals begin selling it on the black market. Daisuke and Haru collaborate to prevent the misuse of Adalium's power while thwarting a criminal operation. In a familiar turn of events, Haru once again finds himself falling into the river. Daisuke, much to his amusement, witnesses the scene unfold, mirroring their very first encounter. 